Hey everyone, welcome back to STEM Edgeer, your source for expanding your imagination and learning all about STEM related topics. If you're new here and you want to see some more STEM content, click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss a new STEM Edgeer video. If you also like this video, remember to drop a like down below. You can also follow STEM Edgeer on Twitter by clicking the link in the video description or by going to Twitter and searching for at STEM Edgeer. And you can do the same thing if you want to follow us on Instagram. And finally, if you have any feedback on any topics you would like to hear on STEM Edgeer, you can send me an email to stemedgeer at outlook.com. So now on to today's topic, computer engineering. Computer engineering is used a lot in our everyday lives, but do you know what computer engineering is? In today's adventure, I'll be interviewing Mr. Bobby Moore, who has worked at Microsoft for nearly 21 years. He majored in computer engineering at the University of Michigan, and his STEM career allowed him to branch into other roles, including public relations and marketing. Let's speak with Mr. Bobby Moore to learn more. Hello, Mr. Bobby. I really appreciate you taking the time to meet with the, me today and share your experiences about your work in STEM. I know you have a lot of great things to share with us, so let's get started. I know you study computer engineering in the University of Michigan. Can you explain to our viewers what computer engineering is? Yeah, sure. Computer engineering is the discipline of building and programming computers. And when you think about building computers, one part of that is just the knowledge of the components that make a computer up, including a CPU, which is like the brains of the computer, memory and storage, which is how information is held inside of a computer, uh, the bus system, which is how information is transmitted inside of a computer, um, and then computer architecture, which is how all those components come together. Now, a lot of that is based in electrical engineering. Uh, and electrical engineering uh, is the discipline of understanding the way that electricity helps um, devices work. So the flow of electricity, et cetera, because at the end of the day, uh, what really makes a computer work is how electricity uh, flows between the system and drives information. Now, the second part of that is programming the computer, uh, which is another way to think about that is how you give the computer instructions, how you tell a computer what to do. So it's the study of different programming languages, uh, whether it's C or C++, or if you're doing web platform, things like HTML or Java. So all of these come together in what's called computer engineering. Uh, and that was the uh, thing that I majored in uh, at University of Michigan. Now, effectively, that's all based in math and science, which is what you're learning today. Could you also explain to our audience why computer engineering is important in our everyday lives? Uh, computer engineering is important because someone needs to know how to build and to program all of these computers around us. And there are a lot of computers around us, even if you don't know it. Now, what's obvious is the personal computer, uh, like the device that you and I are using to communicate with each other. But uh, if you think about it, your phone, for example, is a form of a computer. There are uh, computers in places you wouldn't expect to, to look for them, like cars. A number of cars today are uh, electronically oriented and have many computers running inside of them and even things that you wouldn't expect would have computers in them like your refrigerator for example might have a processing unit or a mini computer inside of it and things like traffic lights even might have uh, processing in it uh, effectively um, what's considered a computer and then when you look at things that we use each and every day for example the internet all of that is based on uh, computers so having some knowledge of how to build and program these things that are really around us uh, and help to make society better and help to make us more productive. Uh, that's, the, um, that's the science of computer engineering. Uh, and it's really, really important because it uh, helps society function. You also had some other roles at Microsoft, including marketing and public relations. How did you transition from a software engineer into these new roles? Yeah, that's a really good question. You know, uh, I first got my love for computers when I was in middle school, uh, probably around your age. I got my first computer. I learned how to program it. It was extremely exciting. But by the time I had gotten to uh, college and I was going after my computer engineering degree, I really had decided that I wanted to marry um, a STEM type background 
with more uh, business experiences. So things like marketing, public relations, um, um, just understanding how business works, uh, even, as, even as it relates to uh, technology. So when I graduated, I came to Microsoft and I was in an engineering discipline. I was what was called a program manager. A uh, program manager is effectively someone who designs user interaction between uh, software and between an, an end user. Um, and as a part of that thinking, uh, I wanted to continue to grow my skills as a program manager, but then I also wanted to at some point branch out um, into more business related disciplines. And so that's what I did uh, when I was at Microsoft for a couple of years um, and I really started to hit my stride as an engineer and I had figured out that I wanted to do this different thing, uh, marketing. Um, I started to ask around. I had different colleagues and different friends and different mentors who all were able to give me uh, guidance. Uh, and eventually I found a job inside of Microsoft that was a marketing job, but they also needed someone who was a bit more technical. And that was right up my alley. Uh, and the rest, as they say, is history. That's very interesting. What did you do in your roles in marketing and public relations? And how did your STEM degree help you a little bit? Most of my marketing um, and business related jobs at Microsoft um, were really around describing what we call the value proposition for a product. Um, now, when I first started off in marketing, that was really oriented around what we would call the office set of products. So I don't know, you maybe use them or something similar like Google Documents. But Office was a set of, was a suite of applications, uh, Word, which was about creating documents, uh, Excel, which was about spreadsheets, PowerPoint, um, which was about slide creation and presentation creation. Uh, I started off doing marketing on those products and I was what you would call an end user marketing, which really means that I looked at the product what the product delivered and tried to describe it to someone who was ultimately going to use that uh, product. Now, the way that my STEM background came in handy was in order for you to talk about the value proposition, what we call the value proposition of a product, which is effectively what a, what a, a person should derive from the product, what they should get when they're using the product, um, the value they should get when they're using the product. In order for you to understand that, it helps to actually understand what the product does. And in some cases, it even helps to understand how the product was built, why the product was built a specific way, so that you can communicate that to someone else. Um, what I found is normally, if you see someone who is talking about a product and they're using super technical language or they're overcomplicating it, it means they may not actually really understand what that product does. So a part of what I wanted to do as a marketer was to really understand what a product does and translate that to a normal everyday person who's gonna go out and buy that product and use it and experience it and explain it in such a way uh, that they could really understand it. And so my STEM background was really, really uh, helpful um, in order to achieve that. You've had the opportunity to do many things at Microsoft. What were some of your favorite or most exciting things you've done since you've been there? I can think of two things in particular. So when I first started in marketing, as I mentioned, part of the um, part of the job that I had was as an end user marketing, helping people to understand what the product does. As a part of that, um, I got really good at you would go through each of the different applications, help people understand this is how you do specific things. If you want to accomplish a specific task, uh, here are some of the interesting things you could do. So I got really good as a product demonstrator uh, and that led to opportunities to meet for me to present in front of really, really big crowds uh, in really specific situations. One great example of that uh, was I was um, the lead uh, um, communication manager for a product called OneNote, which at the time was um, a relatively new product, but now people probably have heard of it. Hopefully a number of people are using it. I use it today. Uh, it's a note-taking software, um, but at the time it was, it was really in its infancy. It was really new. And so we wanted to draw awareness to this product. And one of the ways that uh, we were able to do that was by being in uh, what's called a keynote um, at the Consumer Electronics Show, CES. So that's held in Las Vegas uh, in January every year. Um, and at the time, Bill Gates, who was the CEO and founder uh, of Microsoft, um, well, he is the founder and was the CEO at the time. 
he would do a, a huge keynote in front of thousands and thousands of people uh, in Las Vegas every year. And so we decided that we would use his keynote in order to introduce OneNote to the world. So I had the opportunity to demonstrate the product to Bill Gates in front of 10,000 people. Uh, and it was really exciting. I was extraordinarily scared, really, really nervous, but it was a great experience. Uh, and it allowed me to do some things which, uh, which I don't normally get the chance to do, which is to marry public speaking um, with STEM uh, and with some of the things that I've learned about demonstrating products. So that was super exciting. The second thing is, um, because Microsoft is what we would call a global company, which effectively means that we have customers, employees all over the world, uh, that also gave me the opportunity to travel to a lot of places to meet a lot of different types of customers, to understand what customers think about our product, uh, to help figure out new and innovative ways to help try to market and sell our products. Uh, and so I've had the opportunity to travel to places uh, that I never probably would have experienced otherwise, whether that's Paris, uh, France, um, London, uh, whether that's in, uh, in Asia. So I've been to Beijing, China, uh, Singapore, um, Japan, to name a few places. Um, but ultimately, I've gotten a chance to just travel all around the world. Uh, and that was primarily because of my STEM background uh, and opportunities afforded me because um, I do have these STEM experiences. That sounds very fun. Also, I've heard you've met Jeff Bezos. He's the CEO. He was the CEO of Amazon, who was just recently announced that he'll be stepping down. Can you tell us a little bit more about the experience and how it happened? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, another, again, very early in my career uh, and another, you know, exciting story. Uh, I was involved in the product demonstration at what we would call a launch event, which was basically where we tried to um, put on an event and generate a lot of excitement about a new product that we were coming out with. I think at the time it was a version of Office, the newest version of Office at the time. Uh, and I was one of the uh, keynote demonstrators. And as a part of that launch event, um, Jeff Bezos, uh, and this was very early still in, uh, in Amazon's history as well, um, Jeff Bezos was involved in that launch event. Uh, and so Jeff, um, he was going out to talk about the partnership that we had uh, between Amazon and between Microsoft uh, and how Amazon was leveraging Office uh, to become more productive. Again, this was really, really early. Um, no one knew um, what uh, Amazon was going to become. Um, this was, again, you know, 18, 18 20 years ago. Uh, but I got a chance to meet Jeff as a part of that uh, keynote event. Um, and he was a really great guy, really nice, um, uh, easy to be around, uh, actually with a pretty funny sense of humor. Um, but, yeah, I've always told people that I've had the opportunity to meet two of the richest guys in the world, Bill Gates and uh, Jeff Bezos. Uh, so, yeah, um, just a really exciting time for me. Well, that sounds very interesting. What advice would you give the kids if they possibly want a career in software engineering or maybe work at Microsoft one day, too? I would, I would give three pieces of advice. So the first thing is uh, most of the things that I do today, almost all of the things that I do today uh, from a technology background. So the first thing I would say is continue to take your studies that you have today very, very seriously. Um, if you have a curiosity and a passion for math and science, uh, that's going to play out. And I think at the end of the day, that will be a way that you will find different opportunities for yourself uh, to, for example, one day work at a company like a Microsoft or an Amazon. Secondly, I would say uh, if you do have that passion, um, sometimes it's OK to find things even outside of your coursework. Uh, go out and, and investigate different things, find different programs or different classes that you can take um, outside of uh, what is normally um, taught to you inside of the classroom. Uh, when I was in Detroit and I know in the D.C. area and Chicago area, basically wherever I've been, there's always been some type of STEM related program that you can get into where you're able to learn things um, outside of the things that you learn uh, in the classroom. And particularly important today um, is programming. They have uh, programming languages um, of all levels for people of all experiences. So whether you're just starting or whether you've been programming for a long time, there are classes out there uh, and instruction that you can get uh, to really start to build your skills and to build on that passion. So that would be the second thing. 
And then the third thing I would say is, um, to the degree it's possible, find someone out there uh, who you know has a career today in STEM uh, and ask questions. Get a sense for um, how did they get into the profession that they got into? How did they learn the things that they've learned? Um, what advice would they give? Similar to the conversation that we're having, which I think is, is uh, amazing. Um, find people to talk to. Most people I know who are in a STEM profession, if not all people, are more than happy to talk about their experiences. So getting that type of information, I think is crucial uh, and it helps to inspire you um, and also gives good guidance in terms of different best practices that you can use to uh, eventually get a career like mine or maybe, you know, probably even better than mine one day. Uh, and so that would be the advice I would give. Thank you again for taking the time to share your experiences in STEM. I've learned a lot about computer engineering and what it's like to work for a major tech company. And I know our audience has learned a lot too. Thank you so much. Bye. Absolutely. Thanks, Alonzo. Great to meet you. Thanks for joining me in the STEM and Geo Adventure. Remember, if you like this video, then click the like button down below. And if you'd like to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button. And also, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram by clicking the link in the video description or by going to either of those websites and searching for at STEMAGEAR. And finally, if you have any feedback on topics you would like to hear on STEMAGEAR, you can email me at STEMAGEAR at Outlook.com. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next STEMAGEAR video.